March of 91, and we were playing a private show in San Diego, California. And after the show, we had um, two hawkers that were out at the airport, the FBO, and it was Brownfield in San Diego. That was the airport. And Narvel and Sandy Spica, who was my stylist, who did my hair and my clothes, Narvel and Sandy and I were going to stay all night there in San Diego and fly the next morning or the next day to Fort Wayne, Indiana for our concert the next night. And so the other two Hawkers airplanes were at Brownfield and my band and part of my crew, the rest of the crew was already in Indiana, were gonna split up in these two planes and fly to Fort Wayne, Indiana. And so one of them took off and when the other one took off, the tip of the wing of the airplane hit a rock on the side of Ote Mountain. And it killed everyone on the plane. And when we were notified, Narvel went and had uh, met with our pilot and uh, he told us what had happened and Narvel came back to the hotel room where I was and he said, um, it was two or three o'clock in the morning and he said, one of the planes have crashed. And I said, are they okay? He said, I don't think so. I said, but you're not sure. He said, I don't think so. So in my mind, any minute now, we're gonna get a call. They're all right. Well, that call never came. And so it was um, the rest of the, the night we were, when we, Narvel, was going room to room with the phone and uh, calling. I'm sorry. It's been 20 years. It's just like, I don't guess it ever quits hurting. But I can see that room. I can see Norval walking back and forth. And I'm trailing him, bawling. And he turns to me and says, Reba, you got to go in the other room. I've got to call these people because he had to let them know before it got out on the news. He didn't want them to find out from news, the newscast. And so I went in the other room and I called Barbara Mandrill because I had taken Kirk Pello, my musical director. I had gotten him from her. She was very close to Kirk and I wanted her to know from me that he had died in the plane crash. So it was just, it was the worst thing that's ever happened in my life. But I just can't imagine Jip's family, Kurt's family, Joey, Paula Kay's, all the band that we lost, the pilots, their family. I lost friends. They lost family members. Very talented, fun people to be around. And it was one of those situations where Narvel said, you know, we've got the rest of the tour. And I was like, are you kidding? I, I really thought it was over. I didn't know how on earth the rest of the band, Pete Finney and Joe McGlohan and myself could get back on stage without the rest of them. And I got calls from Vince Gill. He said, buddy, I'll be on stage with you. I'll help you. Dolly Parton should take my band. It was a huge outpour of friends, in the, in the community, family, that were there for us. But nobody could replace the ones that we love so much that we lost. And that's one of the questions I'll ask God when I get up there. Why'd you take them so quick? They had so much more to give. And we had so much more to learn from them. But we learned from that situation. And the biggest thing that I learned is, don't go a day without telling people you love them. And do act like, this day could be your last one. So do what you want to do in the fact of hanging out with your family. Do things that are important. Don't put it off till tomorrow.